Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is Tor Browser to view deep web sites and protect your privacy. So the deep web has become a very big thing within my fan base. People have been asking me, Eli, how do I surf the deep web? So the deep web is all the websites that are out there that are not indexed by search engines. But that's not really what people are talking about. People are really talking about what are called dot onion sites. So these are websites that reside only within the Tor network. So I did an introduction to Tor class before. So if you're not sure what Tor is, go take that class. But basically, Tor is a network of computers that reside on the internet, and the only way to access websites that are hosted by those computers is by connecting to the Tor network. So one of the questions that comes up then is, well, Eli, what if I don't want to install Tor onto my system? Is there an easy way to go and look at these Tor websites to get the benefits of the Tor network without actually having to install any client software on my system uh, for any number of reasons. One, you may just be scared crapless of Tor. You may be thinking, oh no, the Tor people are anonymous folks and anonymous folks are hackers and therefore I don't want to install anything that a hacker might create onto my computer. That's not really true. Tor is actually created by nonprofit organizations, blah, blah, blah. But you may be worried about that. So you may say, I don't want to install any software on my computer from people that I might be concerned about. So, so that's one reason reason you may not want to install Tor on your computer. The other reason you may not want to install Tor onto your computer is that you may not be able to if you are going into a public facility such as a public library, such as a cyber cafe, you may not be able to just, just physically be able to install Tor onto the system. And so you may want to use Tor, but you're not allowed to install Tor, so what do you do? Well, the cool thing with Tor is they have what is called the Tor Browser Bundle. So Tor is a service service uh, that allows you to, to create, to, to access and help create the Tor network. And one of the things that the, uh, the Tor folks have created is something called the Tor browser. So this is basically a derivative of Firefox, but it tries to keep your privacy when you are on the internet. Well, what they have done is they have created the Tor browser bundle. So you get this derivative of, of Firefox plus the Tor implementation all from, uh, from a service from, from, from a uh, executable that you do not have to install onto your computer. So you download this Tor browser bundle uh, into a folder, whether it's on your thumb drive or a CD or whatever else. Basically, you double click the start Tor. It starts up the service. You're able to, to make a few configuration changes, and then you are able to use the Tor uh, browser in order to either surf deep web sites or to browse the internet anonymously sort of kind of anonymously. We're going to have a class on security and all that with Tor, but that's another class. But basically, this allows you to surf the Tor hidden services, these deep web sites, without installing Tor onto your computer and to also interact with the, the internet in an anonymous way. So let's go over to the computer right now so I can kind of show you how this works because it's one of those things, really, honestly, it's pretty simple once you get the hang of, of what's going on. So we're just sitting here at my Windows 7 computer. So this is my stock standard little demo Windows 7 computer, uh, just so you can see. And right now I have Google Chrome open. So this is Google Chrome, uh, the, what's installed on my computer normally. And so if you want the Tor browser bundle, what you're gonna need, need to do is go to Tor project.org and then you're just going to scroll down and at the bottom they have all these our projects tails or bot blah 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 what you are going to want is the tor browser so we come here to this tor browser link and then all you're going to do is you're going to download the tor browser bundle so they have a version for windows they have a version for os x and they have a version for linux so don't worry if if you don't have a windows computer they do have one of these browser bundles for their for all the other operating systems. What's going to happen is once you've downloaded this, basically you just, you're just going to go to wherever your download folder is, and if we scroll down, we're going to see that there is a Tor browser folder. Then all you're going to do is you're going to go into this, and then you're just going to double-click on this Start 
Tor Browser. So you're gonna double click on Start Tor Browser. Now I have actually already started this because it can be a little slow, so I don't wanna to have to slog through here in class um, as this thing starts up. But basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna double click that, and then what you're going to get is you're going to get this Vidalia control panel is the first thing that is going to open up. Then here at the status, you're going to get a nice status bar that's going to slowly truck along with a little green message um, or a little green bar until everything has started up. Once that has completely finished, then the Tor browser will open. And this Tor browser is what you will use to surf the internet, to access those deep web sites, and to remain anonymous. Now here's the very important thing. This is what you will get tested on. You won't actually get tested on, but you should get tested on, is remember that right now, the only thing that is quote unquote, and I picked both some very big quotes there, uh, secure is the Tor browser. So I have Google Chrome open and I have Tor browser open. Google Chrome is using my standard internet connection only the Tor browser is going through the Tor mesh network uh, for privacy and security concerns. So if we go over to Google Chrome, just so you understand what's going on, if I open up whatismyip.com, we are going to see my actual IP address. So 74.107.99.238, that is in fact my IP address. Don't worry guys, all you hackers out there, I don't have any servers running on this system, so I'm not overly concerned about you folks. But this is my current external IP address. Now if we go over to the Tor browser, again we go to whatismyip.com, and we will see that 76.9.57.235. So this is an entirely different IP address than what uh, my, my, my Chrome is using. So just remember, once you've started this Tor service, don't go over and start using Chrome or normal Firefox or Internet Explorer because you're not protected there. You're only protected while you're using the Tor browser right now. So basically, uh, once you know the Tor browser has opened, you do get a few options here where you can go to settings. And when you go to settings, you know they, they give you some stuff you can mess with. Um, proxy application stuff I wouldn't worry about. They do have this interesting thing here for networking. So if you use a proxy to access the internet, you can add that here. If your firewall only allows you to connect to certain ports, so some of you guys, um, you have very, very restrictive firewalls. So let's say you're on a college campus, something like that. Well, you can use this to say what ports you're allowed to connect to the internet with so that Tor can try to bypass uh, and, and circum circumvent those those uh, those restrictions. And then if my ISP blocks connections to the Tor network, we can do what is called setting up a bridge. Again, that'll be something in a, in a different class or you can look it up in Google. So these are some options here. So if you, if, you, if you turn this on and for whatever reason it's not working, and again, you're in a college environment, you're in some kind of government institution where you know that there, there's gonna be strong firewalls, you may wanna go in here and start tweaking with this. Then we go over here to sharing. So the big thing, remember, is, is the way you access the internet within the Tor network is you get bounced through three other computers that are using Tor. So here for sharing, this is where you say how you want other people on the network to be able to use your computer. So you you can say run as client only. This is the selfish way. This is, this is where you say, I want all the service of Tor, but but bite me, I don't want to give you anything. This is not what I would suggest. Then they have relay traffic inside the Tor network, non-exit relay. This is what I would suggest. This helps out everybody else on the Tor network, but you are not putting yourself up to too much vulnerability. So remember, the exit relays are when people leave the network and go out to the real world. Again, if they're doing nefarious activities, that means if somebody tracks back to the IP address that's that's attacking them or hacking them, they will find your IP address and that's a bad thing. So I would say go with a non-exit relay um, and then help sensor, blah, blah, blah. Then down here, we can go to bandwidth limits. We can say how much we want to be able to give Tor, and there's other basic settings. We can go to services. So again, hidden services are these deep web sites that people are talking about accessing. If you want to set up your own deep website relatively easily and quickly, you can do that here. 
Again, we'll talk about that in a different class for the hidden services. We have appearance, and then of course we have advanced, some of this other stuff. So these are the big ones. The big one though that you really are gonna worry about is again sharing. As soon as you turn this on, again, I would say turn it to relay traffic inside the Tor network, and then network if you are again in a college or government facility. This may, may cause you problems. Then, so once everything's up and running, so right now it says, you know, you're connected to the Tor network and the Tor browser is open and I have my, my fancy new IP address. So basically, the first way that, the, that this, this protects your anonymity, your, your anonymity, your privacy, is by you, your traffic is now not routing only through your computer. So your web traffic goes from your computer to another computer, to another computer, to another computer, and at that third computer, it exits out into the, the outside world. So if you go to CNN.com, if you go to eBay.com, if you go to NSA.com, what they are going to see is they are going to see this IP address and not your IP address. So that's how it tries to maintain your privacy. Now, you know, I know that's all nice and cute. and oh, Wow, that's also 2007. What you guys want to know about, right, are the deep websites, these hidden services that are on the Tor network. Now, the main problem that you're going to have is finding the hidden services that are on the Tor network because they can be a bit of a pain in the butt. It's not seeing CNN.com, it's not, it's not eBay.com, it's the, these horrible, horrible, horrible quote unquote web addresses. So what you're going to have to do is you're just going to have to go around and do a little searching, do a little digging. So for me, I went to Wikipedia and I went for Silk Road. So Silk Road is the nefarious eBay uh, of, the, the, uh, of the deep web. And so all I did is I went to normal Wikipedia, looked up S Silk Road, and as we can go over here and we can look is its web address is is this obnoxious thing right here. So this is one way you can try to find these deep websites is just looking them up and then you can click on them in order to access the site. So now I say this is taking a little bit of time. I have been finding and playing around with Tor, even using it, even having the, the Tor relay set up. Um, it can take a surprising amount of time for this thing to actually work. So let me just click this again. And this is one of the reasons why I say I would not um, I would not normally use Tor is just because it is it is so I, I have a 35 megabit per second connection up and a 35 megabit per second connection down and it is so 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 slow. Come on. And Silk Road finally opens. So as we can see, it's this weird domain name thingy here. Silk Road VBP5PIZ blah 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 dot onion Silk Road dot home. And it's asking for a username or password or you can click here to join. So we're, we're not going to mess with that right now. So this is a deep web website, a dot onion website. And so we are able to look at it using the Tor browser. Now again, be on the Tor browser, as I talked about, uh, this allows you to, to keep your anonymity by, uh, by, by uh, hiding basically your IP address. One of the other things though that you do have to realize about the Tor browser is that it tries to, to maintain your privacy not just by masking your IP address using websites, but remember that other plugins within the web browser many times will tell what your external IP address is. So when we use the Tor browser and we go to a site such as YouTube, you will notice things like Flash Player do not play. And the reason is, is because Flash Player can be tricked in order to give away your IP address. So that's one of the things with the Tor browser is it tries to prevent your IP address getting out any other ways. Now again, with the, the, uh, the Tor browser, there's always different options here. You can enable and disable, you have different rules, 
Rebels, uh, it tries to use HTTPS wherever you go. So as you'll notice here, even on YouTube, it's using HTTPS uh, instead of HTTP. So you can turn that off and you can turn that on here. We can go over, there's other preferences that you can play with. So even within the uh, the, the, the Tor, the, you know, there's security settings and proxy settings and all that kind of stuff. And those are the things you can play around with. But the main thing to realize is again, when you use a Tor browser, essentially you're getting a different IP address. It's allowing you to get on to these dot onion or these deep websites. And if you go to normal websites, some things may not work properly because these additional plugins will give away your IP address and private information about you. So that is really all there is to the Tor browser for viewing deep web sites and protecting your privacy. So all you do is you go to the Tor website, you download the Tor browser bundle, you double click start Tor and away you go. I have been playing with Tor quite a bit lately uh, to teach you guys how all this stuff works. And I can, I have to say, it, it can be brutally, 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 horribly, horribly slow, at least in my neck of the woods. Um, and then especially without browser plugins working, it can just be a royal, royal, royal pain in the butt. So I know apparently depending on where you are in the world and how many relays there are around you, uh, some places Tor works really, really well. I can tell you having played with this quite a bit now, it, it, it's almost always an exceedingly painful experience for me. So whether or not you really wanna use Tor, just it's something it's a it's a tool it's something for you to think about the nice thing with this tor browser bundle the big thing with this is it allows you to get to those deep web websites it allows you to to protect your privacy and it allows you to do that without actually having to install any software under the computer so again if you go to a library if you go to an internet cafe you go to a friend's computer you can turn this on you can run it and when you're done you can just stop and, and there's 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 no no tracks that are left so as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. This class was Tor Browser to view deep websites and protect privacy. As always, I enjoy teaching this and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.